May I call the meeting to order or approve the minutes from the previous meeting? So moved. And moved and seconded. Are there any additional corrections? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Zero. Uh, and what are the agenda items from the public? Is there anybody from the public that would like to have something to say? Anybody want? Yeah. You know, it's one. Nobody wants. Just one. Nobody is trying. Perhaps. Number four. Action approved. Mm -hmm. The general address. Mm -hmm. Just road transfer between Winnebago County Highway E and Colorado County Road Highway C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of meetings ago, I brought this forward. Uh, the committee approved it. Um, there was uh, some errors with just distance when measuring this out. So we're bringing this back uh, to committee, and then it'll go forward to county board for uh, full approval on that. I On the handout there, you can see the edits that were made during the orange. So it was... Um, was the linear footage that 8,026 feet? Uh, there was an error on that. So, otherwise, we're just asking for approval from the committee so we could go to county board for uh, the transfer of this. So, with this process, so what will be our old county road T will be, become handed over to the town and will be taken over that pioneer for the county road. So, so the project out there, um, I don't, I, it was a, a rough, rough project, um, a uh, lot of issues with the tractor on the project. Um, they were very short staffed with uh, uh, equipment and operators on the project, which gave us a lot of delays. Um, we did have some poor soil out there, which we we knew um, about that, um, but we got pushed in a corner with us. So the county, we were. The, the, the contractor was doing uh, the dirt work, um, placing the three inch, then the county was placing the inch and a quarter, then paving, um, shouldering. Um, Northeast asphalt shuts down uh, right before we, before gun hunting. So November 15th was our shutdown day. Um, the contractor wasn't able to finish the work out there. Um, so we decided um, that Monday, Tuesday, um, to make the push to close it up for the winter. Um, so that it'll be, we'll have to finish it in the spring is what it's gonna come down to. Um, never had a project uh, goal like this. Um, we had no intentions of this. Uh, should have never, it was, I mean, it's a very small project. Should have never went as long as it did. Um, we did everything we could, the uh, engineering firm to push this just couldn't make it happen. So, um, who was responsible for the problem? I mean, it, it, the contractor just didn't have the staffing for it uh, out there that they promised. So who was it? Uh, Rad Key Contractors was the prime. So, consequences of not complying with the contract? Um, nothing. We didn't have anything in as far as that penalties because we should have. It was. Should have been completed in ample time. Uh, it wouldn't was not even a, a thought that it would drag on as long as it did. Um, I guess we learn now from uh, when we move forward with this. Um, so is the road open for? So yeah. So what, yeah, so what we end up doing? Yeah. So what it end up being is is that if you if you know the familiar with out there that big swooping curve on T 
Um, we made the decision to make the T intersection complete and close off of that, close the curve off. Thought being that contractor could still work yet on that curve, get that uh, as much as he can done yet this year. Um, but we did complete the T intersection. So we've got, it's paved in, it's in a binder for the winter. Um, we got our uh, paving, um, the binders in, we put the signs up, temporary stop signs are out there. Um, so at least now uh, traffic should be familiar, familiar with this new configuration of the intersection. Um, so yeah, the old, the old binder roll, which is all at grade. Yes. Well, just waiting for me. Yeah. Yep. We got a little bit. So the tie-in from uh, on that curve, which when the little piece sub of Grandview, mm -hmm. um, just the tie-in to T, we have a little bit of excavation to finish to complete that in there. Um, so there's, what, what, like I said, what it came down to is, is just asphalt. We couldn't get asphalt after the 15th. So that was the hard firm date. So we either had to make get the binder in uh, and tidy it up for winter. Um, really didn't want to leave that open and gravel over the winter. So, um, so yeah, so it's asphalt, temporary pavement in there till spring. And then we'll big push to get that done. It's not a whole lot to finish up there in the spring. So it's just crazy that, you know, easily in that binder. We had an extra two or three weeks of really nice weather. So, you know, you had extra plus to get it done. Yep. The 15th, our guys were out there. We were out there in snow. I know. That crew was out there in the snow paving that. So, I mean, we, we they got a lot done in that short time. Plus, so, I did some of their work also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We completed a little, yeah, substantial amount of that work in there too. So, so yeah. That's good to subtract it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. I think it might be noted to uh, document. Uh, the process so that there's future bidding involved that this could be considered as acceptance of those bids. It's already looking into that. Yeah. So it should be done for all the whole county because we're looking at that right. old house there now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's Ratchy also. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, I'm sure they're short staffed too. Um, you know, whether they took on too much work that they did promise us extra crews the entire project, and it just never, they just never showed up. And like I said, when you have that firm window, I mean, the asphalt plants always shut down that week before hunting. Every, it just that's the way it goes, and then. Um, then two Northeast did have a, a paving project at Elkhart Lake. So they did shut down. It, it was two weeks. They were shut down exclusively for that project. So, you know, when you have an asphalt plant, that's a stone's throw away. Now you can't do anything now. So yeah, it just, uh, it was just one of those projects that just it kept dragging on. So, so make sure you get to finish it or they get well, whether we do or they, we gotta, that's what we, details we have to work out, so. So, yeah. Um, they, sh they, were, they should have been. Um, last I heard that they pulled out to go work on another project they were behind on. I think it does what they have to keep, they have to keep that in mind. Yes, for sure. The whole county. You might recall, uh, legally, you don't have to accept the low bid if there are issues involved with the bid. Yeah, I mean, they made promises from our last project bid issue. We, they made promises, they just didn't come through with them. So, of course, I would call it even the only one. So, that's the update with that project out there. So, we'll be sure. Yeah, we had some issues out there. Yep. You know, you give the benefit of the doubt and uh, you got burned. So, but that will be completed first thing in the spring. That will be our first mission this spring. You know, we need 
we don't pay them if they bill us not for money they write. So they, they, they only get paid money. for what they complete. So that's why there's a construction engineer out there that quantities, whatever, if they haul material, everything that's uh, quantities and that they only get paid for that. So they could be paid for what they did. Correct. I think you, does everybody have a copy of that? That was sent out. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, Chuck, you might, you know any more about this or? I'm not sure. I was contacted by the town chairman, uh, Matt Woods from Town of Winnicott. Uh, apparently, his board, uh, our own board, has researched this and are requesting a reduction in the speed limit within the defined areas that we have plenty of gentlemen. Uh, it does appear that uh, I think they've done a very adequate job of uh, research and making a determination by the board. Commissioner can give us a little uh, review of the process. Apparently, they've done the study already. There was one done by the sheriff's department with that. Um, just you know what? I, the speeds. Just could tell you. I mean, I get a lot of phone calls with speeds on the county roads. Um, right now, I just received one to raise the speed limit on County Road N. Uh, 255. We just lowered it to 45. Now they want it back to 55. Um, and where about the uh, well, of course, it's the worst Kirby Hilly area in there, double F that vicinity there. Um, so are these requests you're receiving from individuals or from town boards? Individuals, uh, the last for N was a county board member inquiring. Um, so, you know, these are ones we, at some point, you know, we got to make a decision where we, we go with these, um, you know, one thing that was set, you know, in here that strikes me was about the ATV, UTV, um, you know, that those are allowed on this section, 0.35 and the hazard that they cause, I guess that's one thing that strikes me, you know to approve them, to put them on the road. Now they're hazards to be out there. Um, well, that was my argument to start with. <laughs> right, so I think there's a bigger picture with this, whether you know we should probably you know, have a, a serious discussion on you know, where, where do we wanna go with these? I think the ATV, UTV is, a, is gonna be a hot topic. I think it's gonna be, I think you're gonna hear a lot more bigger push um, for them um, and you know, speeds. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of these subdivisions, uh, you know, are, are filling up and now they're requesting the speeds to be lowered out there. You know, I mean, the county roads are those collector roads to, to move traffic. So I think one thing we got to look at is, is, you know, with this, I mean, whether we do a, another speed study or out here within that area, um, I think that's something we really need to look at is what what our objective are with our county roads. So well, we you're thinking that even though they went through all the process so far, that you don't want to? Well, I mean, this, so so typically when a speed study is done, they go by the 85th percentile. Okay, so 85 percent of the cars that travel on that road, whatever that speed is, that's what the speed limit should be. Okay, um, the speed study that was done by the sheriff's department. Um, I just want to get a hold of Greg Cinciola on that. Just verify the email. There is just some. I think it's just the the email. There is just some numbers that were in the email that were wrong. Um, but I have the data from that. I just need to verify with Greg with that, um, and and then we can move forward from that. Um, I think the traffic safety committee is a real good, like typically with these, that's real good spot to start with those, the traffic safety committee, um, you know, with those, and then those recommendations can, you know, 
move on, whether we do a speed study uh, with these situations and um, so the uh, traffic safety meets at the sheriff's department. So it's made of, uh, you know, highway department, uh, local law enforcement sheriff. Um, there's a DOT safety engineer uh, is on that. Um, and, yeah, I think it's a good it's a good place. I mean, you have a, a, a DOT safety engineer that could give good input uh, in these circumstances. And um, like I said, I think I want to verify with uh, Captain Cinciola with that, with the data that he had for, collected from that. And then um, I'll ask to put it on our next traffic safety committee um, and review that and see what recommendations they have. And, um, and I'll get this button. Yeah, and then what I'll we'll do is, can, yep. Can come to the meeting. Yep. And uh, so yeah, we can get a little more input with this. I mean, situation out there and like I said, I just think this is one of it's just it's a topic that's starting to get more traction now. I mean, it's like it's like every day I'm getting a phone call to lower speed limits. Um, you know, in our if I might, Mr. Chairman, going back to your comment about the ATP thing, and it's on a bill on uh, of course I attended a meeting so the other four of the rest of them, there is a big push. You know, you got the clubs coming in and all that stuff. Uh, to now approve at least certain parts of it. But by your comment, and which is kind of revealing on there, is they're considered a hazard to so lower the speed limit as a result of that hazard. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, when you look at that, I mean, uh, you know, I do agree with that at some point. You have a 16 year old. That could be driving that doesn't have the experience. You're putting them in the ATV uh, on a paved surface now. I think there is going to be concern with that. Um, but I do realize that there's a big push uh, for these to be on the road. And I understand that there's going to be a fine line with that. Like I said, that the push with it, but then you have concerns here that, you know, have an ATV out there. And the speeds, you know, so there. That's where I think you gotta have that discussion. Is, is you well, know, the hazard is a, is a frame of mind. Uh, so I don't. Is there any uh, accident reports or anything where we can verify that indeed it is a hazard? I mean, we can we can have do a uh, have the sheriff's department run a report with it yeah. on those and and see. No, being serious and like that. I think it might be more the perception of because you got an ATV there, you know, 35 people have to slow down and we sure. pass them, creating in their mind the word pass. Right. Well, first of all, does anybody who was over to the people of the 25 minutes is not here? Well, they're talking out on ammo here. And it goes by the town hall and goes up the real sharp curves in there. You know, uh, you're heading towards every time I go through Winning County on the weekend, there's only I see five, six of them. Oh, yeah, you two need all that. Yeah. Or so every time I go through in town, but when you get out on the highway to 65 and all of a sudden they come going down the road and there you got the, the clubs. I get, I get phone calls uh, from the clubs asking, you know, like our the ordinance that was passed was a, a, the ADTs of a thousand cannot exceed a thousand. Um, a lot of the clubs now are asking, um, you know, to, uh, I believe they brought up, uh, 1200. well, they were up to 5,300, 5,300 a day, which that's a lot of traffic. That's a, you know, I, Sure. It'd be a tough one for me to say, hey, you know, to allow 5,300 cars on the road and then put ATVs in there, that'd be a tough one. But they claim there's no issues on those roads. And I mean, until you get some data with there that can prove that or negate that, I, I, you know, it's a tough one. It's a tough, but 5,300, that's a lot. That's a busy road. So I, went, I, I mentioned this before. I got a place in Poissippi. Family calls it Poissippi. But anyway, we, uh, 
I cut cross lots of little alpaca to keep from every once in a while. Coming back one day, I don't know how many went by me already, but I had counted 47 of them across the But there was a ton of them went through way before I even went there. There's a lot of counties that has just opened up their town road or the county roads. But can you go to all counties? Kind of, you have got to look to see, well, yeah, Winnebago don't let them on the wrong there or whatever. You can just go on. And I think you're going to see around here most of them are already. Yep. I, I honestly, I think that the, the, the push is going to start. It started kind of the, this summer. And I think next, uh, this spring, I think you're going to see a bigger push with these, with the ATVs to expand. I really do. If you look at the accident report, I get to ATVs. You know, I like them. I don't write them on their own, but I like them. If you also look for uh, motorcycle accidents, you don't need them to die. Oh, no. Yep. Yep. Oh, trust me. I, I've... I've grown up with ATVs. I we've got land up north. I no doubt, um, and I understand. I mean, what you pay for them these days, uh, you want to use them. I, I understand that, and where we're located here with all this water, um, ice fishing, recreation, I, I understand that. I think we got to find that happy medium with with our roads and uh, you know how to pursue this. So we get a lot of money out of for recreation. So, so I think moving forward, I just think I said, I think there's going to be a, this is going to be a, a bigger topic. And like I said, I think, you know, I get a lot more calls with the ATV UTV and a lot with the speed limits now. So requests are all over their requests to raise the speed limit, lower the speed limit. Um, you know, so yeah. Last week there was somebody ice fishing by the background. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you're correct. So yeah, so I guess with with this, what I'm going to do is I will get a hold of Captain Cinciola and verify the uh, the speed study that was done, um, and then we'll move forward with uh, with that with our findings with that, um, and then we can discuss it at our next meeting. Um, yeah, and, I, and I'll definitely go through the safety traffic safety committee with that and. Um, so I think that's the channels we should uh, move forward with. So, can you do a number count out in your vehicles also? I think that was all done with this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we can. I mean, definitely. I mean, obviously, during the winter's not a. You know, with the plowing, it's, it's tough to do them. You want to do those in decent weather. So. But, you know, I went through all their stuff that they had to do up to this point, and the study was done. I don't see why this Well, what I'm saying is, is I mean, whether this they wanted 45 and this is a 55, I guess that's where the determination we made were going as well. So, I'm going to back to them. So, yeah, yep, we'll, yep. Safety thing, yeah. Yep. Spencer Road School Highway Conference, January 23rd and 25th at Juno Vista Resort. Um, I think everybody should have received those uh, from that for that coming up. So just want to make sure that everybody got that and know that that's coming up. Is that something we're expected to go to? Um, I don't know. Well, if you're expecting to, I don't know, David. I don't know. I think it's probably good. Just bring a lot of cars. I mean, there is a lot of the training um, that they do have, the seminars and stuff. There's a lot of good informational yeah. meetings that they have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at times you kind of pick and choose what you want to go. Uh, so they do have some really good. Uh, um, seminars that go on during that time too. So, and then I think the big thing too is, is I mean, you get to hear from other counties what other counties are doing and how they're. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, committee members that are there, a lot of them. Um, so, get uh, get to hear from all over the state what people are doing. 
what's going around in the state too. So all the harmony with our call. So so yeah, that was just touch base that everybody was aware of uh where that coming up. So um obviously with that we with that T Pioneer project, um we still need to haul asphalt, so we weren't able to get wings on uh, our our trucks um and get those all ready for winter. So we did keep that small little group um with those. We're putting those wings on uh right now. Uh, so we should have uh by the end of the week here, I think we'll have just about everything ready to go for um, for the winter. Um, we have uh, this Friday, we've got uh, a safety day planned for employees here. Um, so we got a lot of uh, a lot of good topics to go over, um, especially with the amount of new employees we have. Um, so we do have uh, the vendor coming in with our forest controls, which is our uh, operate our plows. It's kind of just a joystick that runs your plow sanders, everything with that, the computer. Um, they're going to come in uh, given a, a, a informational for all our new employees. Um, I think one thing is, is that moving forward that we've discussed internally is, is that with the amount of new employees we have, um, our training, we're going to have to, training is going to be a crucial uh, topic for us here um we're gonna have to spend a lot more time with the new employees which is which is fine um you know you get when you have your seasoned veterans that have been doing it a lot of years you get spoiled um we saw a big turnover um, a lot of new employees um so at least now we can take the opportunity to train them um so it'll be a, a ongoing all winter um just so we're not going to throw somebody that's uh never been in a plow truck before, just throw them out on 41 or plowing snow. We're going to have, they're going to be out riding with uh, seasoned people that have been out there um, to make sure that they're comfortable, you know, what they're doing out there. So, so. It's hard to keep track. Uh, every time we make out a new phone list, uh, Lori says every time we do that, then we have somebody uh, change over here. Um, we've got to, I think we just hired five, six, seven just recently. Um, I'll get the final numbers on that here soon. We've got another uh, retiree. He's retiring on the third, I think it is December third. The, no, the eighth, no third. I think it's the third. Uh, somebody that's been here a long time is going to retire. So we how is it working with the personnel department? Um, it's been better. Um, we have been doing a lot of the interviewing um, ourselves internally to help out. Um, that has helped a lot. Uh, just you know, to improve uh, time, saving some time. And so, so we've been doing the scheduling the interviews ourselves, um, background checks, um, so reference checks. So, so we've been kind of helping out to expedite that whole process. So yep. yeah, the, yeah, their new addition to their office. Uh, yeah, she, Jamie, she's been fantastic to work with. She's been, yeah, uh, great to work with down there. So, so yeah, it was a big help to get that help down there. So. Like because when you have that many new people, I found experience when you have out experienced people, sometimes the mixture together is well, a lot. You know, I mean, sure. they already have their opinions and ideas of what's going on. This new guy has no idea, you know, what it is. They're trying to do their job and they're trying to learn it. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, whatever. Right. So that's kind of hard to the training. I'm not saying, I mean, you know what you're doing, but with that many new. You don't want to have on until winter. All of a sudden, you know, 
not going to put up with this, I don't think. And I think, I mean, it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, you, you know, you, you get the opportunity to mold those employees to what you want or your expectations now. Um, but I mean, it, but the one thing is, is that, you know, we, uh, you know, you pro we're probably going to have supervisors out with them training during their snowstorms. Um, you know, so I think that's a good thing. I mean, we're going to get some hands on. We're going to put them with uh, veterans that have been out there plowing too. So they can kind of, you know, the thing is that every storm is different. You know, you can have that wet, have, you know, that wet, heavy snow that packs on. Then you can get that real cold that just drifts around and blows off. I mean, there, it's a, every snowstorm is different. So it's not like you can go out there and just say, hey, this is the one snowstorm you take that person out, that this is going to be every time. You know, wind direction, like just everything changes, you know, every storm. And unfortunately, the longer you've been here, you been there, done that, you get to experience that. But um, so like I said, it's just going to take a little more training. Which this is, is the first year that I've seen where the first snow, the first snow that stayed on the road was, uh, it wasn't real bad. Usually the first snow is so slippery because you don't have any salt on it as a base. Right. This year was different. We were able to get some brine down. That's a big thing too. Is um, you know, uh, spraying brine ahead of these storms to get some of that brine down. So we were able to get out on the ice system. And so yeah, you're right. Though is that good? I mean, it worked out very well this year. Yeah. Usually there's lots of accidents at first. Yeah, there was enough of them. I mean, every time you you hate to hear there's any accident, but you know, traffic the speeds out there. It's, I mean, you, you guys are out there. You see the speeds people go. I mean, I was like, you know, when I was out at nights, you, you'd be at that 32, 33 degrees and it's raining and people are driving 80 miles an hour. And, you know, and I'm like, you hit a bridge deck. It's catch ice coming yeah. up sometime. You know, most cars have the, the, you know, your pavement or your air temperature. If they're here for temperatures 33, 32, it should say, hey, we probably should slow down. But um so yeah so we should have like i said by the end of the week here we should have uh all our trucks uh all saddled up and ready and uh we're sure are we always sure anybody or any more yeah we're gonna we were we're one mechanic which we're putting an offer so we should be full fully staffed on mechanics um and then i think we're like maybe four positions now, um, and then we're going to have one more retiring, so I think we're going to be at five. Um, so hopefully we can pick a few. We got one started last week. I think next week we have another one starting. So yes, we get we're 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 bringing them in slow but sure. So question sure. These veterans are out there showing them how to do that. Are these new employees are they getting paid about the same as the veterans are? Because that seems like that's where I always get my call a lot of that there's not hardly any difference between the veterans and the employees and the wages. Well, I mean, they're not, the, the new employees are not making more than, or are they fairly close? Well, I, I mean, I can look in exact, I mean, with it. Um, it seems like there's problems out there that the veterans have been there so long and they're not getting it, and all of a sudden the new ones come in, they're getting their yeah. pay. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, they're not you totally. Yep. Oh, no, I, I, I mean, there's, there's, I see issues with that. Um, where you, I mean, years ago, you used to have that longevity pay for the veterans. Uh, yeah, there's little flaws that could be fixed. And I think this next year, I think the county executive has agreed to start looking at some of those. I mean, the wage study is going to be paramount. We have to get that done. Yeah. And the ones I got calls on was really, to be, it doesn't seem like a lot, but a quarter more than I get. You know, or, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot to me, but they say that. But you have a great opportunity. And congratulations. You got to put you back in for another small oh, okay. Thank you. But I think, and that is a great opportunity for you, is that now in the wintertime, these are going to come up. 
and I, you know, I think I heard like I put an extra hours. I'm working more than I'm supposed to. I'm going to do something that wasn't in my line that I was supposed to do. But it's on the flip side. Well, we really appreciate you doing that. I mean, I know it's not your job, and not, I know you're trying to pay, but I think a lot of times, you know, we put so much pressure on pay. And like I said, I heard a quarter, which I didn't think of. But I think sometimes it's like, hey, appreciate the job you're doing. I mean, I know you put extra hours in. You don't hear that, like, just, hey, can you go out there and do it again? Do it again, then you don't say anything. You know, it's, it's a little bit. You know, but I think that's something that I think if we took a letter, if we did that way, that they felt more appreciated and forget, they take the pressure off the pay in that. So I really appreciate your job. You've been here for a long time. Or you just started the job and you volunteered to work a couple extra nights. I mean, that's huge. I mean, I think that's important. Because I think that's a side that maybe we can get really the kind of classic. Because it, I mean, they talk about the study. <laughs> I'm really worried about the study is not going to be what everyone thinks on. It's just there's too much pressure on. It. So it, it has to be from a different angle. I think instead of just a money part. I'd rather fifty cents more pay than really. Yeah. Fifty cents more pay. Yeah. 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 I'd rather have fifty cents more pay than an animal. Yeah. Okay, you get both. Yeah. We're, we're into this. Okay. Right. Both of them would be better. Be and you're least concerned about them. We're into this yeah. gratitude thing. Right. Um, you know, we had one of, one of the secretaries who paid less because he was making too much money. That didn't go over. He stopped his travel to the state. To change, if I might have the floor, I have a very serious issue. Yeah. That's smart. Oh, I'm going to have to cut you off because it's not on your phone. No, go ahead. Well, uh, awareness thing. We have an intersection in the town of Vinland on Gene G and Wooden Shoe Road, north side of the road. You come up, uh, and it's actually Green Valley. You come up on Green Valley, there's a real sharp curve, and then you stop for Gene G. It's very high in bay. As of last, there's been no less than nine incidents where vehicles have driven off of Green Valley Road down the embankment into the neighboring property, which is owned by Grunson. That's a uh, horse farm, stables, all that stuff. So they always knock down their fences. Uh, you've got broken glass in the fields where the crash of the horses, etc. I have been after a guardrail at that location on that curb for years. And I was told by the previous commissioner, DOT don't require So one time they put up these little white plastic things and all that kind of stuff, which are gone and don't do anything. Well, the issue is really getting worse. As of last Wednesday, a car went off there and the person was killed on that field. We have one death. Then again on Saturday, this last Saturday, another car went off the embankment. I was in the Are they just not stopping for they're stop. They're stop. No, yeah. they're coming, they're coming down Way Valley Road. They're passing Pardon? the intersection of Wooden Shoe. Okay. Then you got a sharp curve to come up onto GG. We need a guardrail on that curve to prevent them from going straight right out into the field. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, as the commissioner now, to get that guardrail installed. Now, to help you make your decision, I called the sheriff this morning. He's going to give a report to the committee as to how many accidents have happened over the last several years. At that point, now you have a fatality. A person died, and several others were injured. Uh, and hopefully, a determination from him and support from him to put that guardrail at that location. This excuse of DOT don't require it anymore is really don't cut. It. This is a major safety. Now, I've done the research, and I can show you that is within the county right of way. It's not town, it's county. I can show you all that I had done. 
So it's our responsibility. To but do you want it back? I mean, but it's on the town road, though? No, it's on county. It's county right on the county road. Okay. No doubt about that at all. So the guardrail would be along G? It would be right on that curve. And that would be Green Valley uh, Road and the intersection of County Road G. You know where I am? So they they come they come wheeling down Green Valley. They don't make the curve. They go off the embankment right out into the field, and it happens time and time again. Isn't there something there? Yeah, it happens. The curve. Curve. at the end of the curve, not prior to the curve at the end of. They're just going too fast. That's why they're losing. Oh, well, no. Something like that. But I do request an agenda item, Mr. Chairman, for the December meeting. Uh, if you would like, I'll have Brunswick come in and testify as to the damage they've had to their fields. I mean, it is just terrible. That guy gets a fence all put up. You know, he's got, he bores horses. And, you know, a week or two later, you got to do it all over. Now you got broken glass. The, the accident where people were killed was really bad. You had to blow the glass out the pasture, you got antifreeze out the pasture, you got oil in the pasture, etc. So it's time I urge this company to address that and get that guardrail established. So it's the try. I just want to make sure. So it's the northwest corner. Uh, okay, you're on uh, Green Valley Road. Yeah. Where do you want to come from? 76? Yeah, if I'm just going north. Then. Okay, 76. You come all the way up to the intersection. At that point, you can take a right and go over the overpass. Take a left and go back to 76. If you go straight, you're back on to Green Valley Road, which continues. The real sharp curve. Isn't that wood Huh? Is that a wooden shoe? Wooden shoe intersects with Green Valley. So wooden shoe don't start there. Wooden shoe starts, you know, I don't know, two or three hundred feet after you get back onto Green Valley Road. There's actually Green Valley comes all the way up to Double G. Oh, and oh, wooden shoe runs yeah, into I got a stop. Yeah. Stop sign now. So can you? I'll put it on the agenda. Yep. Uh, my, I would just share a report. Uh, hopefully, I'd like to ask him to come in and address the committee. Both of the officers that have responded, especially the one uh, where there was a fatality, uh, of course, woke up the landowner, Grunska, at 4 a.m. in the morning. And during the discussion, he said, I don't know why they don't have a guardrail there. This keeps happening over and over and over and over and no guardrail. Even law enforcement has made that. I mean, I would just, my my thought would be is, is that it might be the county right away for vision, but being back that far down, you don't want it was jurisdiction. It's jurisdiction. I got it right on my phone with it. Well, no, I can pull it up. I mean, I'm just. It's, it's our, it's our right away. So it's on County Road G, I guess. That's what I'm, it's yes. on County Road well, G. Well, actually, they, they made that much wider because they were going to put in that, that trail alongside Double G. Remember when the state did that? When they put the overpass in? So they picked up a lot of property, which the county has now assumed authority. Chairman, this is a uh, thing that don't have to back to the board, does it? Thank you. So that's the but line I, line. I'd like to see it go up next week. I'd like to see it put in this week. Go out there and start digging some holes. Okay. Um, don't hire rent. Don't hire rent. <laughs> I guess, I mean, just guard belt's expensive, just that where we find the money, that's the. Well, and you want a revolution for the appropriation? I'd be happy to write it up. I mean, I we, we let's move forward with this. I'd like to just find out, I mean, where it makes sure that we're not putting it on a town road or where we're putting it well, to make sure that it's 
The man didn't fun. work for me back in July. So I was just going to hold her. Well, I mean, there's there's safety standards with guard belting. So it's not you just go throw it in. So there is, yeah, I mean, there's standards you have to meet with it. So that's the whole thing is just that we make sure we don't put something in that's not supposed to be there. Or... And I think the shoulder, then it's shoulder and then it drops off. So there oh, might, they yeah, she drives there, good. There might not be she... enough room. I mean, or, or maybe the guard rolls will have to park me down the ditch or something. You know that, uh... I don't know how far you put your posts in, but you're going to have to run them because you're starting on an angle. You've got a short shoulder and then it drops. So right on that edge, you're going to have to run them down a good four or five feet. In order and this to one I could probably put on traffic safety committee too for them to look at too. Well, so, I'm suggesting maybe you'd hop in a car and just have to go out beside yourself and, and uh, tell somebody to fix all that. What if, what if there's another fatality, like, Two weeks from now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to get on this. We really want to. Okay. Well, what is Now I will. No transparency. Apparently, the people that are in the car were inebriated. And all that. Four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But we got we to gotta keep them. Oh, that property. Now, is it appropriate for me to ask three questions on appropriate or operations? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that three way or that stop sign on Oak Ridge at Taller that was supposed to be temporary is that coming out or is that still? Oh. Yeah, for the for when they had that detour, they put on extra stop signs. Um, oh. that'll be that is uh. Town in Nina in city of Nina's that was their jurisdiction. They wanted that in, so I don't know if that's staying. I can find out. Sure. Question is: I see there's no stole fence on seventy six. Are we not doing that this year? Oh, we're it'll be we just and get two yeah, hours. We're not. Talking over yeah, over there. yeah over the whole stretch, wherever yeah. they do yeah. it. It's, it's coming. Right. And also on 76 at Clayton Center, or not Clayton Center, Midland Center. Mm -hmm. I passed a guy the other night, and all of a sudden there's a yellow line there, no passing. I was pretty past him, but I'm in, in the yellow. Uh, yeah, and so I looked the next day to see if I missed the no passing sign, the triangle. There's not one there. Is, is that something? I can uh, talk to the town or the state like man, and we can take a look at that. It's, it's not there because of a hill. It's there because of the road, Midland Center Road. That's why you can't pass it. Well, this should be there. I mean, that was just re recently reconstructed, so it should be all. I mean, everything up to standard out there. But I can I can take a look at that. The, the sign is okay. It's supposed to be there. Okay. I can check those for you. Admitting the morning. Number 19th, is that what for everybody? That's about third Monday, or I got it's the third Monday, yes. And it works for me, I guess. That's an interference with their party. Yeah, I think it's the third Monday. Yeah, I think it's Is that okay with you? I make a motion right there. I'll second. 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 Second.